हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम नम्रता सिंह एंड यू आर वाचिंग क्वेश्चन आवर प्लस द शो फोकसेस ऑन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चंस रेज्ड बाय मेंबर्स इन बोथ हाउसेस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट कंसर्निंग मैटर्स ऑफ नेशनल इंटरेस्ट इन द राज्यसभा मेंबर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस पार्टीज पोस्ट क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू 11 मिनिस्ट्रीज एंड सॉट रिस्पोंसेस फ्रॉम द रिस्पेक्टिव मिनिस्टर्स सिमिलरली इन द लोकसभा मेंबर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस पार्टीज raised questions related to eight ministries and sought responses from the respective ministers in today's program we will be addressing questions regarding the ministry of commerce and industry ministry of women and child development ministry of ayush ministry of communications and ministry of electronics and information technology and will also provide related information now let's take a look at some of the questions asked by the members in both the houses Rajasabha MP S Niranjan Reddy asked the Minister of Electronics and Information Technology the details of the funds spent under the National Supercomputing Mission launched to enhance the research capacities and capabilities in the country by forming a supercomputing grid. He also asked whether there are skilled engineers to handle the complexities of supercomputers. The ministry in its reply informed that National Supercomputing Mission is a government of India initiative to build capacity in the area of supercomputing. It is implemented by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology together with the Department of Science and Technology through the Center for Development of Advanced Computing Pune and Indian Institute of Science Bengaluru. National Supercomputing Mission was initiated in April 2015 with a budget outlay of 4500 crore rupees for 7 years an amount of over 1200 crore rupees has been spent till date for the mission activities till date systems with a total of 24 pf compute capacity have been commissioned at 20 academic institutions organizations and research and development labs across the country The National Supercomputing Mission aims to connect academic and R&D institutions with over 70 high performance computing facilities fostering digital India and make in India initiatives. NSM focuses on enhancing supercomputer infrastructure linking them via the national knowledge network. The mission has successfully installed indigenous supercomputers like Param Shivai, Param Shakti, Param Brahm, Param Yukti Param Sangadak and Param Praveg Param Praveg recognized as one of the most powerful Indian supercomputers boasts a supercomputing power of 3.3 petaflops making it the largest supercomputer ever installed in an Indian academic institutions This achievement underscores India's commitment to advancing high performance computing capabilities Param Siddhi AI another significant achievement achieved a global ranking of 62 in the top 500 most powerful supercomputers the mission marks india's convergence of high performance computing and artificial intelligence with a dedicated ai supercomputing system handling large scale ai workloads another milestone is the development of the indigenous server named rudra a remarkable feat under the nsm engineered to address the high performance computing requirements of government and public sector entities rudra based on intel cascade platform underscores india's prowess in server technology this accomplishment aligns with the mission's objective of achieving 85% indigenous manufacturing additionally the nsm has pioneered cutting edge technologies like three netra high speed interconnects and direct liquid cooling units emphasizing innovation in supercomputing infrastructure These indigenous efforts have resulted in cost efficient and power efficient systems showcasing India's commitment to sustainable high performance computing. Nine more supercomputers are scheduled for installation in prominent institutes further consolidating India's position in global supercomputing landscape. The NSM continues to drive advancements in HPC and AI positioning India as the key player in the world of high performance computing. Lok Sabha MP Sanjay Kaka Patel and Lok Sabha MP Adala Prabhakar Reddy asked the Minister of Ayush 
whether the government has taken or proposes to be taken any measures to promote yoga education in the universities across the country. They also asked whether the government intends to implement the seven programs for universities as recommended by the committee under the chairpersonship of Professor H. R. Nagendra. The ministry in its reply informed that the University Grants Commission has introduced a curriculum and credit framework for undergraduate programs encompassing health, wellness, yoga education, sports and fitness. This framework, effective from December 2022, requires all higher education institutions to adopt it. Moreover, a committee chaired by Professor H. R. Nagendra has proposed a curriculum for yoga courses in universities. The ministry has advocated for UGC endorsements of five yoga courses at both university and college levels, which include Bachelor of Science Yoga, Master of Science Yoga, Doctor of Philosophy, Postgraduate Diploma in Yoga and Postgraduate Diploma in Yoga Therapy. Additionally, the Bachelor of Naturopathy and Yogic Science is now a degree under Section 22, Subsection 3 of the University Grants Commission Act. Furthermore, yoga is introduced as a subject in the National Eligibility Test in the January 2017 UGC NET session. In response to the recommendations of the Professor H. R. Nagendra Committee, yoga courses are actively promoted courses in universities and colleges. As a result, dedicated yoga departments have been established in various central universities, including Hemvati Nandan Bahuguna Garhwal University, Vishwabharti, Central University of Rajasthan, Central University of Kerala, Indira Gandhi National Tribal University, Manipur University, Dr. Harising God Vishwavidyale, Central University of Himachal Pradesh, Central University of Haryana, Central Sanskrit University, Lal Bahadur Shastri National Sanskrit University, and National Sanskrit University. An inter university center for yogic science has also been established. Yoga, a global phenomenon since 2015 attracts over 250 million enthusiasts. The International Day of Yoga proposed at the United Nations in 2014 drew participation from 180 plus countries, highlighting its universal appeal. As the world's largest public initiative, yoga symbolizes unity and serves as India's cultural envoy. India actively promotes yoga globally through diverse initiatives. The Study in India program incorporates yoga training, while the Inter-University Centre for Yogic Science in Bengaluru focuses on academic engagement. NCERT's Yoga Olympiads integrate yoga into educational curricula nationwide. The Yoga Certification Board standardizes training and raises awareness through the Information, Education and Communication Scheme. Mass Yoga demonstrations globally organized by Indian Mission ICCR and the Ministry of Tourism feature iconic locations. The Ocean Ring of Yoga initiative signifies harmony. Intertwining Yoga Bharat Mala and Yoga Sagar Mala seamlessly merging yoga with cultural and natural elements, endorsing its integration into various aspects of life. The India China College of Yoga showcases India's dedication, marked by an MOU with Yunnan Minzu University. The WHO M Yoga app, developed with the Moraji Desai National Institute of Yoga, provides learning modules globally. Rooted in Indian culture, yoga epitomizes unity aligning with Ek Bharat Shreshtra Bharat, the commitment to evidence-based research, collaboration with institutions like AIMS and the Ayush Health and Wellness Centers under Ayushman Bharat, enhance public access. Rooted in Indian culture, spirituality and philosophy, yoga epitomizes unity, assimilation and acceptance. It showcases India's commitment to fostering a world united through transformative power of yoga. Rajasabha MP Mitlesh Kumar and Rajasabha MP Darshana Singh 
asked the Minister of Commerce and Industry whether there was an adoption of a new strategy to boost seafood exports, especially in the light of the global pandemic. The Ministry in its reply informed that a range of strategies have been implemented to enhance seafood exports. These include active participation in international trade events, organizing virtual and physical buyer-seller meets, conducting reverse buyer-seller meets, and providing financial support for processing and exporting value-added seafood products. The Ministry has also undertaken product and country-specific profiling to tap into new markets to facilitate ease of doing business for seafood exporters, processes like digitizing export facilitation certificates issuance and streamlining regulatory compliances have been introduced. Further, measures such as establishing a nucleus breeding center for the specific pathogen-free tiger shrimp breeding project in Andaman Island is expected to make India self-reliant and boost shrimp production as well as its exports. Adjustments in import duties are aimed at making India's seafood products competitive globally. The remission of duties and taxes on export products rates were increased, resulting in a notable 35.51% growth in seafood exports from India from $5,957 million in 2020-21 to over $8,000 million in 2022-23, registering a growth of 35.51%. India, with its extensive coastline, spans 7,500 kilometers across nine states and three union territories, possessing significant potential in the blue economy. Fisheries and aquaculture activities play a vital role, providing livelihood for approximately three crore fishers and fish farmers nationwide. A leading shrimp producer and seafood exporter, the country's seafood exports previously stood at over 30,000 crore rupees in 2013-14. In a remarkable achievement, India exported a record-breaking over 17,35,000 metric tons of seafood, valued at approximately 64,000 crore rupees in the fiscal year 2022-23. This represents a substantial increase of 111% since 2013-14. This marvellous growth is despite the challenges posed by the global pandemic. India shipped over 13,69,000 metric tons of seafood worth over 57,500 crore rupees in fiscal year 2021-22. In 2020-21, India had exported over 11,49,000 metric tons of seafood worth over 43,700 crore rupees. Frozen shrimp remained the major export item in terms of quantity and value. Frozen fish, the second largest exported item, fetched over 5,500 crore rupees, accounting for 21.24% in quantity. Surmi fetched over 2,000 crore rupees, becoming the third largest export basket, followed by frozen octopus, surmi analog products, and canned products. Frozen squid, fetched over 3,500 crore rupees, accounting for 4.83% share in quantity. Initiatives like the Blue Revolution Scheme, Fisheries and Aquaculture Infrastructure Development Fund and the creation of Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying have resulted in a significant boost in investments in the sector in the past nine years. Sustainable practices within the sector are evident in programs such as Sampada Yojana, and the Sagarmala project, aimed at hastening the vast potential of the blue economy and promoting integrated coastal management. India's seafood exported to 129 countries has witnessed a steady rise. While US remains the largest export destination for Indian seafood and seafood products, followed by China, the European Union and Southeast Asia including Japan. The Marine Products Export Development Authority organized 40 virtual buyer-seller meets with key markets in fiscal year 2022-23 with countries including Japan, China, Russia, United Kingdom, Vietnam, Germany, Malaysia, South Korea, Oman, Singapore and Spain contributing towards the strategy to boost exports. 
This collective approach reflects India's commitment to sustaining growth and positive development in the fisheries and aquaculture sector. Rajya Sabha MP Dr. Shantanu Sen as the Minister of Communications. The total number of gram panchayats covered under the Bharat Net project till now. He also asked the total funds allocated, disbursed and utilized for the Bharat Net project in the past three years and the current year. The ministry in its reply informed that in the last nine years, over two lakh gram panchayats across India have been connected under Bharat Net. Under the Common Service Centre 2.0, 5.58 lakh CSCs are functional across the country as of October 2023. Of these, 4.44 lakh CSCs are functional at the Gram Panchayat's village level. To address the various challenges faced in Bharatnet, the government has amended the Bharatnet program to cover all the inhabited villages at an outlay of more than 1.88 lakh crore rupees which include upgradation of existing Bharatnet network, focus on utilization of the network through Bharatnet Udyamis or village-level entrepreneurs, operation and maintenance of the entire network through professional agencies for 10 years, dedicated network operation centers, expanding scope to connect all inhabited villages and to provide 1.5 crore homes with fiber connections. Bharatnet project, the world's largest rural broadband connectivity initiative using optical fiber aims to enhance internet access in rural areas. The project aligns with the Digital India program, seeking to provide non-discriminatory access to broadband connectivity for various services in rural and remote India. Strategically, village-level entrepreneurs, Uddhimis, have been employed to extend fiber connections to the last mile, accelerating connectivity over the next 2.5 years. Seeking to compete with private operators, the project underscores its focus on establishing a significant presence in less visible rural areas. The project aims to connect all 6,40,000 villages and over 2.5 lakh gram panchayats across India providing a minimum of 100 Mbps bandwidth at each Gram Panchayat to ensure widespread access to online services. The revamped approach involves collaboration with village-level entrepreneurs for fibre connection implementation with the government covering infrastructure extension costs and entrepreneurs contributing to maintenance on a 50-50 revenue sharing basis. Initiating the process by connecting over 1 lakh gram panchayats with broadband through underground optic fiber cable lines. The subsequent phase involves extending connectivity to all gram panchayats using a mix of technologies. The third phase, spanning from 2019 to 2023, focuses on creating a future proof network with advanced features, incorporating fiber connections between districts and blocks to ensure redundancy. A successful pilot in 60,000 villages established household connections, prompting the engagement of Udyamis and anticipating the creation of job opportunities for 2,50,000 individuals. Approximately 1,94,000 villages have been connected, providing internet access to around 5,67,000 households. Over 3,51,000 fibre connections established under the new Bharatnet Uddhimi project to date. The Bharatnet project aims to provide last mile broadband connectivity to all Gram Panchayats. Lok Sabha MP Dr. Vishnu Prasad MK and Lok Sabha MP TRVS Ramesh asked the Minister of Women and Child Development. The present status of implementation of Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. They also asked the other steps taken by the government for the welfare of women in the country. The ministry in its reply stated that over 3.59 crore beneficiaries have been enrolled 
since the inception of the Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana up to December 2023. Further, maternity benefits of more than 14,429 lakh crore rupees have been dispersed to over 3.21 crore beneficiaries during the aforesaid period. The ministry informed that it has digitized the application process for Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana with the introduction of a mobile app and a dedicated portal, PMMVY Soft MIS, eliminating the need for paper applications. The online form is user-friendly, ensuring a smooth application experience. Anganwadi workers and accredited social health activists can fill beneficiary forms on the mobile app or PMMVY Soft MIS. Additionally, the PMMVY Soft MIS allows beneficiaries or their representatives to self-register, further simplifying the enrollment process. The ministry informed that women-centric welfare schemes have been streamlined into two verticals, Saksham Anganwadi and Potion 2.0 and Mission Shakti. Under Saksham Anganwadi and Potion 2.0, the Anganwadi Services Scheme, Potion Abhiyan and Scheme for Adolescent Girls are reorganized into three key focuses, nutrition support, early childhood care and education and Anganwadi infrastructure. Mission Shakti, comprising Sambal and Samarthi, prioritizes safety and empowerment. Sambal includes existing schemes like one-stop centers, women helplines and Beti Bachao Beti Padhao, Ujwala, Swadhar Grih, Working Women Hostel, Krishna Kutir, Vrindavan and National Crash Scheme. This restructuring aims to enhance nutrition, safety and empowerment initiatives for women nationwide. Mission Shakti has been instrumental in shaping India's development narrative, recognizing the inherent connection between women's progress and the nation's overall development. Over the past nine years, Nari Shakti has become a central force in the country's development journey, adopting a nuanced life cycle based strategy for women's empowerment. Meticulously crafted welfare programs offer tailored support at different life stages addressing socio-economic barriers hindering women's empowerment. The country has observed a positive shift in the sex ratio, rising from 1991 to 1020, signifying a noteworthy improvement in gender balance within the population. Meanwhile, the maternal mortality rate has seen a notable decline to 97 in 2018-20. A key element of Mission Shakti comprising Sambal, and Samarthya sub-schemes focuses on ensuring the safety, security and empowerment of women. This comprehensive approach integrates existing schemes like one-stop centers, women helplines, Beti Bachao Beti Padhao, Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana, Shakti Sadhan, Working Women Hostel and National Kresh Scheme. Jan Oshadi Kendz now offer sanitary pads at 1 rupee significantly enhancing the accessibility and affordability of menstrual hygiene products. This initiative plays a crucial role in promoting women's health and well-being. Mission Shakti has achieved significant milestones including a groundbreaking sex ratio of 1,020 women per 1,000 men, an extension of paid maternity leave from 12 to 26 weeks and the successful execution of over 3.94 crore free antenatal checkups. The PMMVY portal and mobile app include features like facial authentication technology for verification of beneficiary bank accounts and a streamlined paperless online registration system. These innovations enhance the efficiency of the registration process and service delivery, ensuring smooth fund transfers through direct benefit transfer. Since its inception, the portal has facilitated financial support for over 3.19 crore beneficiaries with the total disbursement exceeding 14,424 crore rupees marking a significant stride towards fostering women-led development in India. Aside from the question hour, both houses conducted legislative business. Let's review the key highlights of the day's proceedings in the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. In the Rajya Sabha, when the House met for the day, ministers laid important papers, 
pertaining to their ministries on the table of the house minister of state for parliamentary affairs v mulli dharan apprised the members of the upper house about the bills the government wants to bring to the house next week meanwhile no legislative business was transacted in the lok sabha today and the proceedings of the house were adjourned till monday well that is all i have for you in this edition of question hour plus thank you for watching sunset tv